Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel here. How are you doing today? You have seen the title of today's video already and this is all about testing in production. Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. And well, what can go wrong, right? What could possibly go wrong when testing in production? And maybe you've done it already as well in your company, in your team, in your setup, in your environment. And yes, of course, I have done it myself. Testing in production is definitely something that you should consider when working with your product to gain more insights after the release. So testing in production is nothing stupid, nothing wrong, but there are, it comes with some pitfalls, risks and challenges that I would like to tell you today in that video so that you don't make them. So let's take a look. So is it a good or bad idea? I mean, I said it already. I think it's a good idea if you know the risks and challenges that come with testing production. And it's a bad idea if you have no idea what can go wrong on your production system. So that's why I'm more on the good side and I hope you too. So what is testing and production all about? So first of all, it's a, it is a development and testing practice to test the new code on the live environment. Yeah, Fair, as simple as that. You put the code that you tested on a, maybe on a staging environment to the development, no, not to the development stage, but to the production stage. And then once the code is there, you do some final tests to see that everything runs as expected. A good thing, right? So some might call it, let the user or the real user test the product. Yes, this is also sometimes a misconception about software testing that say, okay, we don't need testers. We let the customers test the product on production. Mm, no, that's not a good idea to test with real users only. Yeah. So, however, it provides several benefits for development teams and we come to that in a second. As I mentioned, it comes with risk and challenges. I will also highlight those. And really, really important to keep in mind, testing in production should never replace other functional, non-functional testing that you have to perform on developer sandboxes, staging environment, pre-production environments, or however you call your testing systems or test environments. So testing in production is just in addition to the, all the things that you have done before your go live with your code changes or with the new features. Yeah, so that's really important for you to remember. Hey, sorry for the little break of the main video. Today's video is sponsored by Squish, an excellent tool for functional GUI test automation. Squish provides efficient and agile automated GUI testing with multi toolkit applications. As you can see on the screen, it has tons of powerful features to tackle any testing challenges you and your development team might have. Here are some features that I think are most beneficial. You can record, edit and execute tests with Squish without a steep learning curve. It's very, very intuitive. The tool offers extensive integration options. It's fully compatible with CI-CD system and version control system. It's streamlining your workflow for rapid deployment. Another example for its versatility is that it's available in whichever scripting language you use, from Python, JavaScript to Ruby, just to name a few of them. And it's especially good at testing applications on multiple platforms. Whether you're working with Java, Windows or more, Squish has you covered with powerful property-based support. There are a lot of materials on Squish online, but I recommend trying out this interactive tour so you can see firsthand how Squish works. You really get a good general idea now and the feel of the tool. I would recommend you to check the video link down below to take your tour on your own and to learn more about Squish today. And now back to the main video. 
So what are the key points of testing and production? And I will bring them all up front right now. So here you can see the key points. So testing on real environment, that's the first thing, right? So if you do testing on the real environment, that's important. You test with real data. Yeah, also important to keep in mind when you do some testing on, on the production system that you might influence the test the, the data that is on the production system. You can get some load and performance insights because this is where you should do like load and performance testing on a production environment. However, it, there's also some security risks that you mitigate or that you leak sensitive data. We come to that in a second. But you also gain some security insights. So in case you do some cross-site scripting or whatever, some final tweaks and tests on the live production system, you can get some security insights too. Monitoring and observability is also important for every development team, I would say, because without that, it's like flying an airplane without looking outside of the window as a, as a pilot. So monitoring and observability, it should be like the default standard for each and every development team, because then you know like how the system behaves on production, like what is the database doing, what is the API is doing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, testing and production can also validate the infrastructure and the configuration that you are doing. For example, the CICD pipeline for pushing out new stuff can be tested as well in that point and uh, is also giving you some insights on how this process is being developed and how is it being used. Yeah, so that's also something that comes on top of it. Um, I mentioned before, testing with real users is not a good idea only, but you can use A-B testing, for example, with real users. So you build different variants of your product, A, B, C, D or whatever, and then you test those features with real customers to gain some early feedback. But that should be used from a product management perspective to gain insights about how the product idea was implemented and not about like, is the feature functional the feature functionality correct or not? Yeah. And of course you can use feature flex um, in order to, to slowly ramp up the, the new changes or to just enable the features only for, for your development team, for example, to see on production what's going on. And then you can slowly ramp up the, the usage of the of the feature um, in your user base. And last but not least, also maybe a term that you have heard, it was also introduced, I think, by Netflix some years ago, is the called chaos engineering. So uh, Netflix was doing um, some chaos, or is still doing some chaos engineering, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> they also developed the, the chaos monkeys. I'll put a link in the video description for you to follow up. So it, it basically is, is, a, is a mechanism or a technique that you, like on the production environment, you completely switch off servers. Or, or like reconfigure some load balancing stuff to see how the system behaves and if the system is stable enough, mature enough to, to cope with that changes. And that's called chaos engineering. That's really something that you should only do if you know what you do. Yeah? That's important. Um, so what are some risks and challenges here? Um, first of all, the testing and production only is you ship bad code. If you don't do any pre-production testing, and you do the first test on the production environment, it's really, really challenging and risky to do that because once the, the, the broken code hit production, potentially all your customers can, can, can um, yeah, benefit from the bad code, right? Um, another thing that I mentioned earlier is security risk. So again, if you ship bad code or like malfunction features, uh, you have a potential security risk of data leaks. So you might get some data losses, data leaks or security breaches in the code base. And that's, that's bad. Yeah? <clears throat> um, the testing and production can cause a system overload. Yes, imagine doing chaos engineering stuff wrong in the wrong way, or you do some load and performance testing on production and doing it wrong and do not isolate the testing on production environment. You can completely DDoS your application. You can kill your servers. Everything is going shutting down. Nothing is going to work out. And this is really bad. Right? I mean, if this is going to happen, it's bad. Uh, it's bad. You will lose money, revenue. You will lose reputation in front of your customers and trust and whatnot. So be careful. Yeah. And of course, it's a it's a challenge and or a risk that you test with real data. Again, keep in mind that 
you test with real data on the production system. So in case you have sensitive data in your databases and you do something on production, being it Chaos Monkey or like some test automation, you are going to change this data as well. And that can influence your statistics. We'll come to that in a second. But it will also, of course, change the data. And it's not easy like to, okay, let's reward everything we've done. That's not possible. Yeah. Also, testing in production will influence your tracking analytics data. Also something that you have to keep in mind. I mean, if you do like intensive testing on production, you see in your in your analytics dashboard, hey, we have more visits, more activity, and then product management is happy, is telling like everyone, the stakeholders like, hey, we, we gained 20% of activity. And then he found or he, she found out that you've done some automated tests on production. I think he or she will not be happy. <laughs> so keep that in mind too. Um, and it requires a mature deployment process. That's also important. So, because if you do like some, uh, your, your deployment process is a manual uh, thing. So you have to ship the code manually, execute some scripts manually to, to get the code to production. That's not a good idea because if you do testing in production, it has, it requires a really mature develop deployment process because in case something is going to happen in production, your team or you have to react fast. And you can only react fast if your deployment pipeline is automated and solid and working really well by just changing some code that was malfunctioned, do like the, the regression testing and then ship the code and that's good. Yeah. In best case, you have feature flex implemented so you can really uh, switch off the, the malfunction features. Yeah. So these are some of the risks and challenges that I see. So what are now the benefits of testing and production? Yes, finding bugs and other issues. I mean, yes, I mean, that should be a no-brainer. The more you test, the more things you can find, the more issues you can you can observe and see and, 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 and report. Um, but as I mentioned before, testing and or like finding bugs should happen only or like, first of all, on the pre-production environments because it's a more safe environment. Yeah. Um, more benefits is a better and faster release process. Yes, you can get, you can benefit from that. So in case you have a fast uh, feedback cycle and fast feedback loop, you can do also some more intensive testing and in production. If you find something, you talk to the developer, he or she is fixing it and you do like this kind of way. But be careful with that, right? Um, fast feedback, yeah, if you do testing and production and now looking more on the A-B testing side, a feature flags or beta programs um, with real customers, you can get fast feedback. So you build something, you do some minor testing on the pre-production environment and then ship it and then see how the, the features um, is, is being used by customers. Um, of course, testing production is much better or is the only way for load and performance testing. You cannot do this on, on a sandbox or on a Docker container, for example, because this is not like in the uh, working in the real hardware environment. So you really have to have real servers, cloud infrastructure that you are using also on the production system to load, test and performance test your application. Yeah, that's important. Um, I mentioned already real user feedback via beta programs. Yes, that's part of the fast feedback cycle. Uh, I would always recommend you to create beta programs in your company to invite real customers to get early access to your product development, product features to give valuable early feedback. That's important. Yeah? And of course, you get live app performance monitoring, not only performance monitoring, but in general monitoring and observability. That is something that you gain also from testing and production to see like what's going on with the system, not under test, with the system in production. Yeah. So we are already at the summary point of uh, time of the video and a big plus is testing in production can be a great addition. That's what I mentioned before, not do it exclusively. Yeah. Testing in production is an, an extension. Um, Everyone in the team, if you're doing that, should know the risks and the challenges that come with it. Check the look, the, go, go a few minutes back and you can see them again, the risks and challenges, because if you don't mitigate the risks here, a lot of stuff can happen. Um, testing in production will shift the mindset. That's really important. I've seen it as well myself. So in, in case developers testing on production or they know that you are going to test in production and maybe also users beta programs are established on production, it will shift the mindset towards a more quality mindset. So people really think upfront more about how they would like to implement it, how this should be implemented. And that's important. And that's, that's a cool thing. 
And last but not least, yeah, I mentioned it again and again and again. I cannot repeat myself more often on that topic. Testing in production should never replace any functional or non-functional testing on a staging system. Yeah, please keep that in mind. Don't do only testing in production. You will not be happy with it in the end, right? And with that, we're already at the end of the video. Let me know in the comments, what are you doing with testing production? How does it look like? What are you performing there? Are you doing some specific, let's say, non-functional testing like security performance testing or other types of testing? Let me know in the comments. And as always, like the video, share it with your network, subscribe to my channel to support me. And I'm happy that you're here today. See you next video.